It's a kitty gang show on Scarbox Nation TV. It's the kitty gang show on Scarbox Nation TV. And we're coming to you live from CB Getty. It's the Giddy Gang Show. Giddy Gang Show. 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 It's the Giddy Gang Show on Cigar Box Nation TV. Welcome back to the Giddy Gang Show, everybody. Here on this pre Memorial Day weekend, we. We hope, we hope you launch off what'll be a, a great long weekend. Um, yeah, buddy. Yeah, got buddy. Glenn Watt here. We carefully planned the uh, coloration of our shirts to get the red, white, and blue. We did. We did. It, this, Early this morning. This went back months. Yeah. Months <laughs> in the works, in the planning. <laughs> there. Uh, so we got a good show for you today. i um, going to be talking a little bit more about sea shanties that we started talking about last week. Uh, Nick's going to come up and sing a few more with me that we have extensively, exhaustively rehearsed and practiced all of It's going to be awesome. Early. All of one time a little bit earlier today. So we got that for you. Uh, I see some names popping yeah. up out there. Um, one of the bigger pieces of news, of course, it is Memorial Day weekend here in the United States. And we're having a little bit of a sale mm -hmm. over at cbgiddy.com. If you mash in a, a coupon code of SAVE15, S-A-V-E-1-5, you'll get 15% off everything, store-wide. Does that include pickups? The kit and the caboodle, folks. Oh. It does include pickups. Soup to nuts. Does it include, ah. Uh, includes everything? Everything. Everything. Even my hobo fiddles, songbooks, mm. the new songbook. We'll be singing a couple out of it here shortly. This is my first draft copy, the Sea Shanties and Seafaring Songs songbook. I know our good buddy Louis LaMana, who might be out there already, uh, got the number one copy, the first copy to roll off the press. Louis was right yeah, there ready for it. Well, Louis suggested a couple of songs that made it into the final uh, book there, so we appreciate that. Thank you, Louis, for your support. Covered up my script here with my songbook. Don't worry, folks. Trained professionals. So, uh, yeah, the CB Giddy Sale, it's going on through Monday night. Now, my advice to you is to not wait until 11.59 p.m. on Monday night to mm. start placing your order. Seems like every time we have one of these scheduled cutoff sales, somebody waits till the very end and then gets quite upset that he didn't get... They don't want to specify any gender, but uh, the, the discount did not apply, so... Get in there. I can't honor it on Tuesday, everyone. Okay. Well, you know, we, we try not to be too, too, oh, shoot. We try not to be too hardballish about that, but uh, just drop my pick into my hobo fiddle, but I got another one. Don't worry, folks. Who we got out there? You've got more? today and today only Rick Ganey. It's good to see you, Rick. Michael Thankfully, Cap not just today and today no. only. We're always glad to see Rick out there. Michael Capato. We've, we've been centered. Hey, Marty Tauber. Marty, enjoying retirement? It must be nice. I, I heard yesterday that there's been some fishing. Ah. Some fishing involved off the lovely coast of Maine, or near it. Yeah, Damon Park, Janice Wilson Hughes, Kenny, up. Magic Daddy, Matthew Ma Simpson. Simpson. Matthew Simpson, Wayne, Wayne Anderson, Helen Ringer, Tiffany, Tom Schaefer, and a whole lot more. Dutch Wigman. It's good to always see you, Dutch Wigman. Dave Gatton, Keith Rear, Rick Shane Spiel. You know you're out there. Colin McKenzie, it's good to see you, sir. Got, it's all we need. All right, so we're gonna be singing a few songs in a little bit. Um, speaking of Colin McKenzie, mm -hmm. posted was it just earlier today? Posted on the Friends of CB Giddy Facebook group. What's that? Well, it's a new group we started a couple of weeks ago, specifically for our friends, people who uh, are good, are customers of CB Giddy, friends, people we've met, people we haven't met, people we'd like to meet. Yep. 
just anyone who appreciates that we appreciate and who appreciates what we do. It's just kind of a place to, you know, one more place. We tra we're trying to figure out how to make it a little bit different um, from the many other groups on Facebook. Janice Wilson Hughes has put forward an idea of, of ways we can make it not just another place where people come and dump uh, photos, which is nice too, you know, seeing what people build is always nice, but how to try to, you know, make sure there's a little more uh, sharing of advice, how to, interaction, connection, communication yeah. amongst people. Like, don't just, don't just show what you've done, say a little bit about it. Uh, what challenge did you overcome? What uh, problem did you have to solve? Possibly in a creative new way. Have a conversation in this world of social media. Be That's nice. it. Speaking of conversations, I did want to talk to you about what our good friend Colin McKenzie yes. posted earlier today. Yeah. He posted a photo, yeah. um, which I don't believe we have on deck, but the, oh, we do have on deck. Huzzah! Look at, that. Look, look at these guys. I know, these guys. Nick, Nick over there behind the producer's desk, just on top of the things with the buttons that get mashed. So, this is a dulcimer right that our buddy, yeah, this is... Wait, no, just stay right there. <laughs> this is a dulcimer that our buddy... Our buddy Colin built, and, and along with it, he posted a little bit of a story. Now, it's a mountain-style dulcimer. I believe it has three strings and diatonic fretting, which means you leave off the sharps and the flats, basically. Uh, and somebody, I think it was our, our buddy uh, Sue. Sue. Sue M. Yeah, she mentioned that you can play this using our Kanjo songbooks. Yeah, that's it, it awesome. It shows you if you're just playing on that melody string. Anyway... Colin mentioned that he, he's had some, some physical issues, yeah. a spinal cord industry, uh, injury. It's made, a, I believe he was a wood turner, you know, so. using the lathes, turning wood. Uh, that this injury has made his usual forms of woodworking a lot more difficult mm -hmm. to physically do. Um, and that he's been trying a few different things to figure out how can he still build and play. Yep. Um, finding a way to build what he plays and plays what he loves. Love he it. says he's, he got uh, inspired in a way by the hobo fiddle idea and uh, tried a couple of canjos and, and couldn't quite get the canjo playing to work and then he struck on this mountain dulcimer idea. And if you don't know with the mountain dulcimer usually we don't have an actual one handy but usually it's like placed on your lap or on a tabletop and you play it just by kind of fretting one string and you can use a noter like a little piece of wood or, or a little piece of bone or something to move up and down to fret that one string at the different places while strumming all three the other two acting as drone strings and you can play pretty you know quite nice music on it so uh, it was inspiring to, for me mm -hmm. to have Colin share that story, how he's overcome uh, adversity and obstacles in the way, and still finding a way to make music. Yeah. Now, I said this was going to be a discussion, so no. over to you, Glenn. No, I think that's, <laughs> you're hitting on all the, all the things that I would like to say as well. I will, what I can add to it, however, is just only related to what Colin built, and that is we we'd not so long ago shared a uh, courting dulcimer here on the show. Oh, picture. that's right. And I, yeah. I had the first I'd have ever seen about. We've all, we have built one mountain dulcimer here. It was Jason out in the shop. This many. Beautiful. Played well. Got a chance to play it before it went somewhere. Yeah. Uh, but nonetheless, great stuff. And uh, not that long ago, we, uh, we maybe Jim's. I saw Jim Morris out there. Maybe he knows what I'm talking about too. I'm sure plenty of people do. But uh, courting dulcimer is kind of like taking two dulcimers and putting them back to back like that, and then two people sit across from one another who are courting, so to say, in, a, in an environment where people can keep an eye on them yeah. while they get to know one another and play dulcimers. I don't know. So I mean, it, it, Colin's efforts and his ability to, to, to push his own personal envelope just kind of reminded me of the, the neat things that these instruments uh, can be, uh, this, the situations they, they can uh, uh, make in our lives, to, to make it short. Yeah. You know, I, I think we say this every time the topic comes up, but an old story about the courting dulcimers, the ones with the two sides, and uh, you know, a boy and a girl would would be on either side playing it. The parents or the the chaperones wouldn't even have to stay in the room. Mm -hmm. They would know if the playing stopped that things might be right. going a little bit off uh, off kilter, you might say. So, 
on it. See Rusty Taylor out there, Rick Flink, and Michael Capato. Always good to see you all. Uh, you know, we got a big... Well, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Never mind. So anyway, that's... Uh, don't want to lose your no. walk corner notes there. Of course. Not, nothing heavy. But. Nothing. Yeah, we got four sea shanties lined up that Nick and I are going to have a go at. I just want to say a shout out to our good buddy, A.J. Gaither. Mm -hmm. If you follow A.J. on Facebook, you know that that man fights harder than probably anyone I know to be a musician. Mm -hmm. Speaking of overcoming adversity, you know, just sometimes... I know he feels like he's banging his head against the wall. Well, he is on the road. He headed out this morning in, in his old van there to try to get to three shows this weekend, spread out between Arkansas, Colorado, and Texas. So it's not a short trip. So we just want to send all the good luck and, and best wishes we can out to AJ as he, he gets on the road and, and doing the Lord's work out there. If you live in any one of those states, I yeah, hope you don't mind uh, checking out to see if he's playing near yeah. you then. It's a short drive to anywhere from anywhere in those states, isn't it? <laughs> I, I'm not so. sure exactly. I think maybe Fort Collins. I'm not sure exactly where he's going. But if you look if you look him up on Facebook, he, he's out there. He plays homemade instruments, hauls them around with him. He's got his little dog Bobby, Bobby. in the band with him. And songs, he, he plays original songs. You know, he's not running around doing a bunch of covers. He, he's... About as real as it gets, folks, and we, we, we hope he's we hope he makes it. All right. Yes. Nick, you ready to come up and do a little singing or yeah? Ooh. Ah. Huzzah. So we'll shuffle Glenn off into the I wings. Shuffle. I shuffle. The green room to check read fan mail and uh <laughs> if you want to do the comments from over there, Glenn, you can I, I looked at it last time and I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing over here. Just so. it's uh the left one uh is Facebook. The mashing of the buttons. What and then uh, I'm on YouTube as well. Yeah. It's fine. It'll be fine. Hi, guys. Hey, Nick. Welcome. Uh, they don't let this face out in front of the camera that much. Oh, more and more as of late. Uh, so we're going to be actually using the new songbook here, the, the, the sea shanties and other seafaring songs, to help us out with some of the lyrics. Because a lot of these old sea shanties have a lot of words. So... Get slides out of the way. Swipe left. I don't know. Glenn knows how to. What did I do? Oh, swipe up, I think. I can't get it. Oh, squat. Ah, up, get. Technology is hard. Ah. Swiping up, just, just, you know, sorry guys. Yeah, we might not be able to see comments, but Glenn will holler out to us if anything exciting happens, won't he? Swipe left. Yeah, we got people are excited to see Nick up there. We got Rick, Jim, Keith. Go, Nick, go. Is that the key we were doing it in? I didn't write down any keys. I don't remember. I think, I think so. This is a beautiful <laughs> old sea song called Leave Her Johnny Lever. Uh, it was usually sung at the end of a long voyage. The sailors are getting ready to go ashore. Their time at sea is done again for a while. And uh, there's a little bit of, of melancholy and longing in it. They're glad and excited to be Sure, but uh, kind of sad to be leaving the sea too. Well, I thought I heard the old man say, Leave her, Johnny, leave her. You can go ashore and draw your pay, and it's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. For the voyage is done and the winds don't blow, and it's time for us to leave her. You may make her fast and pack your gear. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. And leave her more to the West Street Pier, and it's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. For the voyage is done, and the winds don't blow, and it's time for us to leave her. 
winds were foul and the work was hard. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. From the Liverpool docks to the Brooklyn yard. And it's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. For the voyage is done and the winds don't blow. And it's time for us to leave. She shipped it green and made us curse. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. The mate's a devil and the old man's worse. And it's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. For the voyage is done and the winds don't blow And it's time for us to leave her Well, the winds were foul and the ship was slow Leave her, Johnny, leave her And the grub was bad and the wages low And it's time for us to leave her Leave her, Johnny, leave her, oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her, for the voyage is done and the winds don't blow, and it's time for us to leave her. The winds were foul, the trip was long, leave her, Johnny, leave her, but before we'll go, we'll sing this song, and it's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her, oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. For the voyage is done, and the winds don't blow, and it's time for us to leave And, uh, oh, Louie's out there singing along Louis! with his freshly printed uh, sea shanty song Bless book. Bless out there. It's for Pete's sake, just leave her, Johnny. Leave her, Johnny. Uh, <laughs> easier said than done, Les. You know, I, I've never been a sailor myself, but no. I know, well, a lot of the, the sailing songs are either about having to go to sea or uh, getting done with a voyage, going ashore with your pockets full of coin, yeah. blowing it all on one spree, <laughs> and then having to go <laughs> right back go out because right <laughs> you're you're broke. So yeah, the, the old sea songs are it, pretty good stuff. Reminds me of uh, a couple of friends. My when we were Navy. Uh, there was one uh, he spent you know a couple of years out on sea and. He didn't like being on dry land. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you get the uh, you get the feel for it. And... Yep. All right. This next one has been in some of my previous songbooks. It's uh, generally considered to be an Irish song, and it kind of ex ex exhibits the Irish tendency towards a bit of exaggeration, <laughs> you might say. Uh, yeah, it, it's in the new songbook. The Irish Rover is the name of this one. Curveballs later on in the show. Well, what you got, Big Dad? We've got a request from Jacksonville. Jacksonville? Uh, Scotland. Blow the, blow the man down? Blow the man down? Blow the man down? Well, we we had a poke at that earlier. We maybe we see. Can, uh, we'll see how we go. We'll see. Always like to get uh, Shaq Collins out there uh, working on what is going to be an awesome Pepsi crate guitar. He's posting some uh, progress photos on the Friends of CB Giddy uh, Facebook group showing him disassembling. It's an old Pepsi uh, uh, soda crate uh, that would hold the bottles, I believe, back. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, I the, saw that. Tall, returnable bottles and taking it apart and then going to be rebuilding it. And can't wait to see that because, as you, as you know, I like me some uh, soda crate instruments. Now, now, Shaq, I, I saw that he had posted on the, uh, oh, that's pretty much, you probably just said that, but on the, uh, the CB Giddy uh, um, group, yes. the new one there. Uh, if you all have any, uh, any tips or tricks to cut a straight section off of a crate without using a table saw, I, that's, I know that's a really tall thing, but I, there's got to be a way. There's a way, but I mean, well, yeah, it's other than doing it by hand, it's easy to <laughs> screw up. Too. Yeah, yeah, it is. But 
you know, circular I, saw yeah. with a, a clamped on uh, guide yeah. that the edge of the circular saw plate could ride against. That can kind of mimic a, a, uh, a table saw. You know, clamping on a, a piece of wood, like a piece of one by two, like neck stock. Yeah. You draw your line where you want the line to be, you glue on a piece of wood, and then a handsaw very carefully using that piece of wood kind of as like a miter guide. Yep. You keep the saw blade nice and perpendicular to it and flat up against it. It's, it's risky though, especially when you're working with an antique piece like Shaq is, you know, you gotta... Those Japanese dovetail saws are yeah. really good for that a though. Finer tooth finer saw tooths, so it yeah. won't tear. Because then you got to get it all smooth for gluing the top on. And, yeah, and yeah. if you if you do that, cut it proud, and then either plane it or that's great advice. Right you know, uh, yeah. uh, cut it a little further past your line, and then just yeah. sand it. Or you can take a um, leave a little a extra rasp meat. or a or a plane and, yeah. and kind of shore it down. All right, so we got the Irish Rover here for you, and Nick and I discovered when trying to sing it earlier that the key. That we're going to do it in is uh, B flat. Actually, I decided to do it on the guitar, didn't I? I don't remember. I was trying to play in B flat <laughs> on the hobo fiddle there, and it's possible. Let's just say that it's possible, but I might need a, possibly need a little more practice. So I'll just cheat with the talent adjuster here. <laughs> uh, get it talent adjusted properly. Our Lord, eighteen hundred and six, we set sail, sail from the sweet bay of Cork. Good old Cork, we were sailing away with a cargo of bricks for the grand city hall in New York. Meet an elegant craft, she was rigged for in half, and how the trade winds drove her. We had twenty-three masts, and we took several blasts, and they flew over the Irish. Sales. We had four million barrels of stone, and we had five million hops and six million dogs. We had seven million barrels of porter. We had eight million signs of old pine horses' hides. The hold of the Irish Rover, and there was Barney McGee from the banks of the Lee. There was Hogan from County Tyrone. Johnny McGurk, who was scared stiff for work, and a chap from Westmead named Malone. And there was Fuller Oto, who was drunk as a rule, and there was fighting Charlie Boyle from Dover. And your man, Dick McGann, from the banks of the land, was the skipper of the Irish Rover. words in this song. Alright, here we go. Well, we had sailed seven years when the measles broke out and the ship lost her way in a fog. Great fog! And the whole of the crew was reduced down to two. Just we sailed and the captain's old dog. And then the ship struck a rock. Oh Lord, what a shock. I nearly tumbled right over nine times around. And the poor old dog was drowned. <laughs> I'm the last of the Irish Rover. <laughs> A few more times through that, and by God, we're gonna we're gonna nail it. How many times have I heard that song, and how many times? Well, you... there's a lot to it, you know. All right. Now we've got one that is not, it should be in the songbook, it isn't because I'm still learning it. It has been brought to the table here by our Nick. No actual table involved. So the funny thing about this one is I heard this one from a video game. Assassin's Creed? Assassin's Creed yeah. Black Play. A lot of, Shane got turned on to sea shanties by that game. His, yeah. his boy was playing it and he was listening. What is all this cool music in here? 
uh, and this is uh, a Roll Boys Roll. Uh, Sally Brown, um, from what I know, is a, is a, um, a common term in nautical. Uh, there's a lot of songs that feature a Sally Brown. Um, it's probably code for something. Most, <laughs> most of these old songs have at least a few double entendres in them. Oh, yeah. And seeing as how Kim Starling is, is out and off today, she's usually the drummer, but I'm going to have a go with this. If, I can, right. if I can remember the tempo now. Not much of a drummer <laughs> myself. Um, hey, look, Nick Lanciano's oh, watching. Oh, I'm very talented today. Can we block him? <laughs> I don't know. Can I block myself? <laughs> Probably. Uh, what's, uh, remind me, of the, what, how's the rhythm go? Roll, boys, roll, boys, roll. Ready? Yeah. Sally Brown, she's the gal for me, boys. Roll, boys, roll, boys, roll. Sally Brown, she's the gal for me, boys. Way hi, Miss Sally Brown. It's down to Trinidad to see Sally Brown, boys. Roll, boys, roll, boys, roll. Down to Trinidad to see Sally Brown, boys. Way hi, Miss Sally Brown. She's lovely on the foyard and she's lovely down below, boys. Roll, boys. Roll, boys, roll. She's lovely cause she loves me. That's all I want to know, boys. We hi, Miss Sally Brown. Oh, Captain Baker, where do you store your cargo? Roll, boys, roll, boys, roll. From my store forward and some I store afterward. We hi, Miss Sally Brown. Forty fathoms or more below, boys. Oh, boys, roll, boys, roll. There's forty fathoms or more below, boys. Way high, Miss Sally Brown. Oh, way high up and up she rises. Roll, boys, roll, boys, roll. Way high up. Then the block is different sizes. We, I miss Sally Brown. One more pull, don't you hear the mate calling? Roll, boys, roll, boys, roll. One more pull, that's the end of all the hauling. We, I miss Sally Brown. Sally Brown, she's the gal for me, boys. Roll, boys, roll, boys, roll. Sally Brown, she's the gal for me, boys. Way I miss Sally Brown. Oh, <laughs> well, I need water. Give me one second. Thank you. Yeah, we should have broken these up into two parts. Yeah, no, right? <laughs> With a break in the middle. <laughs> Getting a little warm. What you got, Glenn? What? Jimber wants Jimber! A Roll Tide wants a shirt just like yours. Where can you get one, Ben Baker? What a great question from our good friend Jim Burt. I know um, a guy. Yeah. Uh, kind of in a state of transition in that regard. Um, getting a new site set up just for clothing and mugs and accessories and pillows and banners and all sorts of stuff. Uh, I can send you a link after the show. I, it's from a, it's, right now they're on Teespring. Um, but I don't have the exact link ready, but no, it's all right. It, it's a good thing to, to ask. Actually, Jim, if you go on the site, the new site is named hobofiddle.com. I think I've got this design uploaded on there now. It's still a work in progress, but uh, you can place orders. So what's the third song or the fourth song we got? All the way, Joe. Oh, Lord of mercy. <laughs> So this is another uh, a cappella one that may or may not benefit from the drum. We'll see. If I stop playing the drum part way through, it's because I've exceeded my <laughs> technical capabilities. He's all drummed out. When I was a little boy, so my father told me, Timmy, we all the way. Wow. 
was the king of France for the revolution. To me, we all the way will fall away, Joe. And then he got his head chopped up. It won't spoil his constitution. Hey, we all the way will haul away, Joe. Saying we haul the way. Practice. What other? It, oh, the blow the man. Uh, easy. Blow the blow the man down. Blow the man down. Yes, it's that's one where you got to say the entire title in quick succession. <laughs> well, I wasn't like I got halfway through it. I'm like, uh. Uh-oh. All right. Um, we can at least do the first verse, Chad. I'll sing you a song, a good song of the sea. To me, way hey, blow the man down. I'll sing you a song, a good song of the sea. To me, wave, blow the man down. And after that, you'll sing out the chorus with me. Give us some time to blow the man down. Will a bonny good mate and a captain too? To me, wave, blow the man down. A bonny good ship. Bonnie good crew, it was some time to blow the man down. I think that's, <laughs> that's about so. the extent of what, what we've got on that one. So, All right. No, that was for Jim Burt, wasn't it? Yeah. That wasn't for Shaq. No, Sorry about Shaq, that. Was, uh, Shaq was a different one. Uh, Jim was also asking uh, in, in a comment, I think also on the, uh, it might have been on the Giddy page, not the group there, about... The Popeye. Remember the old Popeye cartoon theme song? Um, well, that oh, is... Throw the man down. Was, was throw sure. the man, blow the man, whatever you want. You know, he's flexible. <laughs> so he asked for the Popeye theme song. Couldn't give that, but the college hornpipe, an old traditional Irish instrumental tune, was kind of used in the, uh, in the writing of that theme song. And I... It, it's not an easy one to play, but I'll give you just a couple of, of measures of it and see if you recognize it. <laughs> yeah. Let me try that again. Shoot. This is hard, people. All right. 
right. So that's enough of the college hornpipe. Clearly, a little more practice needed on that. Well, there's a ton of them in there. So. I had a bunch of them. All the good ones, none of the bad ones, or something like that. All right. Well, thank you, Nick. Thank for you. Coming up here, we're we're gonna have to put together a whole uh, show of of mostly a cappella, belted out songs like that one of these days. Um, and now. I'd like to welcome back to the Giddy Juke Shack stage. Oh, geez. The hey. one and only. Aw. These guys. Come on Come now. Up. I give it up to uh, Ben and Nick for an outstanding performance, but uh, that is something I can't do. So good on both of them for belting that kind of stuff out. It's awesome to hear them both. Now. Lock Corner, you know the deal. This is where you send us, send us pictures of the things that you built uh, using CBGD parts or kits or whatnot. And this is where I have the opportunity to share some of that with you. Not every single picture is exactly as I've described it, but you get the spirit of it. Because first up, a regular supporter of uh, CBGD Crafter Supply is our good friend Dar Stella Bada. And I really just wanted to share this picture because she, much like AJ Gaither, that uh, Ben mentioned earlier, who uh, puts his heart, soul, blood, sweat, and tears into being a performing artist, so does Dar Stalabata. And uh, like I said, she was over there in the Netherlands, so over there around the Holland region, uh, touring recently. I believe she just got back into the States a couple days ago, and uh, I know that I look forward to seeing all the things that she has to share about it, but I, I look up to this, to this woman. I, I met her online a couple years ago, a few years ago now, I guess, uh, when she was really just kind of breaking into the cigar box guitar world and uh, she's really put both uh, put a good foot forward and really put herself into it and has done an awesome job building playing and and sharing things with the rest of the uh, cigar box guitar community that I think are inspiring so I hope that you're out there Del Dar Stella Bada, and I hope to uh, see from you soon and I think you're doing awesome stuff so thank you for and she's gonna be at as it turns out the Pacific Northwest Cigar Box Guitar Festival on June 1st I believe and I think so at least and I believe that is the same day that uh, the Huntsville, Alabama Festival, and then a week after that is North Carolina, their inaugural festival. A week after that is going to be Marty Tauber Cigar Box Guitar Festival up in Naples, Maine. There's all sorts of stuff going on this summer. But let's move on. Because next up, after Dar Stella Bada here, we have from Idaho Kite Man a guitar that he built that he writes, A friend of mine asked me to build a cigar box guitar, but I never heard of them before. A lot of us hadn't for a long time. So I had to do some learning and investigating, and the results are this here guitar in the photo. I like it. I just I also like the way that you write, so that's good stuff. It sounds pretty good. I like it so much, I believe I'll build a few more. Thanks, CB Giddy, for finding me or helping me find the parts I wanted to use. And thank you, Idaho Kite Man, because I think you did a great job on your first build. And I'm confident that your friend, the recipient of that gift, is uh, going to be proud to have it. So it's awesome stuff, Idaho. Thank you very much. Next up, we have from Janice Wilson Hughes. I just can't get enough of getting this woman on the show. And I'm proud to have more women on this show. And this is something that, that Janice has been working on. And I'm just going to read what she wrote because I think it's awesome. These handmade slides are hot and fresh out of my oven glaze kiln this morning. That's yesterday. Uh, this morning and heading to CB Giddy later today. Are these slides part of the Memorial Day sale, Ben Giddy Baker? Yes, they are, Glenn Watt. Yes, they are. 15% off. Just type in the code SAVE15, SAVE15, and save 15% off these amazing slides, of which I own three. And that's how good they are. Janice Wilson Hughes, you make awesome slides. She continues, however, yesterday, I spent 12 hours firing them to over 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit. And for those of you in the rest of the world, uh, that is 1,200 degrees Celsius. That's a, that's a lot of degrees. That's hot. It is hot. That's hot. It's, like, yeah. it's hotter than you guys down in Georgia and Alabama. I know that. It's close. You guys are close, but uh, it takes that that much heat to melt the powdered mineral glazes that you see into glass coatings over the white stoneware. So get all those colors, those beautiful colors on those beautiful slides. It takes over 2,000 degrees to get that stuff done. Um, I really appreciate what she writes next, and it's, I make ev each and every one by hand. When I am making them, I like to imagine people having fun making music with them for years to come. It makes me happy being able to know, or being able to make something so small that can bring musical joy to other people's lives. A big thank you to Ben, that's Ben Giddy Baker, 
for carrying these at CB Giddy Crafter Supply and to each person who has tried one out. And I know there's plenty of you out there that have tried them out and that are proud to have them, use them regularly. I know that I'm one of them and I hope that you don't, if you don't yet, that you certainly consider getting a slide from Janice Wilson Hughes, but it's Evolution Stoneware Pottery and you can say them this weekend 15% off the coupon code SAVE15, save 15 and get yourself some slides and more cool stuff at CB Giddy Crafter Supply. I'm pitching today. I'm yeah, pitching. Buddy. All right, next up, I got some more. <laughs> I got some more ladies in this house. We got Sue M, another favorite. I'm loving this work that the ladies are doing. Sue M has been recently sharing um, guitar license plate guitars that she's been building. She built this. Uh, you can see flags on both of these. So on your left, you can see the Irish flag, and on your right, the Mexican flag, because those are the two uh, two of the major lines of. Uh, ethnicity that she has flowing through her veins. She writes, or I'll just, or she's, and actually, so you can see these, they're beautiful guitars. And the next image that we have from Sue Ann is her l most recent build. And she writes about that. Here's the one I'm working on. It's a Scottish guitar, if you can see it. I love this. Uh, I like to do these according to my family ancestry. Uh, they, they, you can see that they're gonna have giddy strings, eyelets and screws and bridges and all that. Thank you very much, by the way. And the tuning machines. Um, but she uses a lot of scrap wood to build her boxes and her necks. And I think what really, not think, I know, what really gets me about this particular one isn't just the, the Scotland uh, sticker label that you can see front and center, but it's the two sound holes that you're going to have a difficult time if you're watching this on a mobile device right now. But the two sound holes are cut in the shape of thistles. The, uh, as far as I understand it, the Scottish flower. And what I really enjoy about what Sue is doing is she's providing a story to her to her instrument, something that means something to her. Now, I and you've probably heard me go on, on at length about people who do this. I don't do it myself, so I'm not, I, I'm just really inspired by people who do. They, they create, not even just, but they attach a story to the things that they're building to give them more meaning. Ben does it with hobo fiddles. Magic Daddy did it with the Liar's Liar and other instruments that he's building. Sue does it with this. Like, I just love the stories that are attached to the things that you're making with your two hands in your workshops or on your kitchen tables and I think it's really cool stuff. And thank you, Nick, for getting a close-up on those thistle sound holes. I think they are the jam. So that's, thank you very much, Sue M, for being as awesome as you are. And speaking of stories, next up we got Tim H. And I saw you out there earlier, Tim. I hope you still are, because this is your stuff. Now this image, we got two images of this one instrument. Uh, it, and Tim writes, the picture on this, actually, if you don't mind, Nick, I didn't realize that'd be so small. Would you mind getting the next one too, sir? The, what Tim writes about this, this is the picture depicts Isis, a minor, stick with me, the minor deity of earth and birth who became one of the most powerful and important of the Egyptian goddesses. She was the protector of the dead, healer of the sick, representation of womanhood, the most powerful in the use of magic, the god king of Egypt, as well as several other attributes as if there are any more to have. Um, those are my words. Also in the picture is the scarab symbolizing immortality and the such, the eye of Horus, and a few other symbols. And what I'm really inspired by, and you can actually see through the sound hole, I like this, like these little uh, tricks that you, some of you do, like Shane does it with his peephole sound hole covers and whatnot. You get a little image on the underside or uh, in, inside the, uh, the box below the sound hole. I think just it's a nice touch. And what I'm really digging about, again, Tim's work, Sue's work, and Ben's work, and everybody else who's trying this kind of stuff is attaching a story to the instrument that you're building. I think it's awesome. So good on all of you. Thank you very much for sharing that with us, Tim. Uh, I was I was gushing over it over there on the uh, on the interwebs, and I'm gushing over to here over of your instrument here too. So thank you very much. Last up, I know you already left, Louie, but I wanted to I wanted to share a little bit of this happy face, this handsome man, this devil of a handsome man over from Pennsylvania, Louie Lamana, holding his sea shanties book. That you can get right now. Is this book on sale, Ben, ben Giddy Baker? Why, you know what? I think it is. The Memorial Day Sale this weekend, C15, S-A-V-E-1-5. You can get this sea shanty book. The stuff that you've been hearing Ben and Nick singing about and whatnot, you can get this uh, sent to you for 15% off. Now, Louie writes, look what I got today. Ben's new book will be coming to camp with me because he's leaving to camp this weekend. Uh, this is the first copy of the book sold. The foreword is dated May 17th, 2019, and he, Louis, received it on the 22nd. I hope the ink's dry, Louis writes, and in the next image you can see, even, uh, so this is me doing this stuff. Ben doesn't have anything to do with this. I just love this. He, ben even signed it, you know, it's he numbered it. I don't know, that's kind of cool stuff. After a while, you, you, you kind of want to hold on to things and that, that mean something, they're special, they're, they're made. 
uh, with the blood, sweat, and tears of uh, people you know and you uh, like and trust. Uh, and then when you get something like this to hold and to keep with you, I think it's a pretty special thing. So that, my friends, is what? Da 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 Corner. Thank you. How's up? Hey, welcome back. I missed the two-minute warning. I was over ah, there, farting around on the phone, replying to comments. Crushing candy. Crushing candy. Well, it ain't going to crush itself, folks. <laughs> I'm just saying. What are we doing? A song? I don't know. What is happening? Uh, yeah, we'll do the... Uh... Oh, now my phone's ringing. I'm not going to answer it. Uh, we'll do... Uh... This is a song for Memorial Day uh, that I wrote last year, uh, just before the holiday. Um, it kind of sums up some of my feelings about things. I didn't realize that you had that on there, my bad. That's all right. I didn't realize you had it on you. <laughs> it's all the same show, folks. Don't worry. All the good stuff is getting said and done. And... <laughs> it's not the right rhythm. Each year at the end of May, we're asked to pray. For the soldiers who have fallen along the way But it don't seem quite enough The surface barely scuffed Of what we owe to America's fallen brave So here's to the soldiers, the sailors and marines Fires and those lost out at sea. Let's all give thanks in our own way, and not just on Memorial Day. To the ones who died to keep our country free. I think about the ones who gave it all. Stood up proud when they heard their nation's call. I think of the honor and the fame, the glory and the pain of those who fought and died standing tall. So here's to the soldiers, the sailors, and marines. Fires and those lost out at sea. Let's all give thanks in our own way, and not just on Memorial Day. To the ones who died to keep our country free.
Everybody in the world. Yeah. All right. Uh, what the heck we got next? Oh, it's time for the live hands-on how-to demonstration. You know what we are missing this week, Glenn Watt? Hands-on demonstration. No, user submitted videos to yeah. give us a short breather between segments. <laughs> <laughs> Become rather reliant on having uh, those yeah. to let us uh, think and regroup for a moment. But anyway, I'm going to. You can come too yeah. if you want. So this could He's also come too. A friendly request. Oh, to that's right. send your videos of you playing something or builders tips or workshop stuff to us at support at cbgiddy.com so that we can share them here on this show. It's true. We love them. You love them. Everybody loves them. Hi, Kim Starling. Kim Starling's out there. Did you see me playing the drum earlier, Kim? I think she just joined. Got your drum in here. I was playing it along on sea shanties. Poorly, I might add. Anyway, we're going to step over to the uh, Juke Shack workbench to talk a little bit about violin style rod piezos. I, I'll tell you more once we're over there. I just realized we're going to have to turn these mics on, too, over there. He's already on. He knows. Nick knows. All right. Chugga, 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 chugga. Shuffle, shuffle. Shuffle. Shuffle your shuffs. I don't know if, if Glenn... Hey, there we are. All right. Boy, that was a long walk to get over here to the CB Giddy right. Juke Shack bench. Hey, there's Glenn Watt. What? Okay. Making the, making the trek over. All right. So uh, the reason for this is a little bit earlier this week on... Uh, I believe it was on the, the Fretless Builders page or something. A, a, a customer of CB Giddy, Scott V. Yes. Scott V uh, had recently gotten one of our biscuit bridges mm -hmm. for use on a resonator and the violin style rod piezo, which is uh, switch over here to the close up for a second, Nick. So, for those of you who don't know, the violin style rod piezo is a flat topped rod piezo with the lead you know the hookup lead coming out of the center of the bottom and that is different from kind of your standard rod piezo which has uh it, it made for different numbers of strings three four six that has the lead coming off of one end and then of course there's the piezo cables which has the lead coming off of the end, and these are flexible. We'll talk more about piezo cables another time. They can be pretty cool. But anyway, the violin style rod piezo, center lead, flat top. Okay, go back to the main shot there. Um, we made these biscuit bridges to work with these violin style rod piezos a while back, been a good while, for going on the Charles Atchison uh, resonator cones which are no longer available um, and at some point it turns out the manufacturer started making the violin style rod piezos a little longer than they used to so what Scott V discovered much to his chagrin and then later mine was that I can't get it. Uh, they no longer fit our biscuit bridges they're a little too long so he was asking can they be cut and I, uh, Nick posed the question to me, I believe, or, or I saw it online, I can't remember, but I was like, well, you know, I don't know. Can they be cut? What's in there? So I decided to take one apart. Uh, do we have a, a razor knife in here? I thought I had brought one in, but... Yeah, there's one. There's one. There you go. Thanks. It was, and the razor was not uh, extended before he sure. threw it. All right. Um, so I decided to cut one open and show and learn for myself and be able to show others what's inside one of these things. So take it back to the close-up, Nick. I'm going to do this live on the air. Yeah, it's getting a little warm up here. Um, so basically, I just it's got this black shrink tubing over it. Well, we're getting in close now, people. Look out. That's good. So it's like shrink wrap you, or shrink tubing that you could put on wires and such. And by just cutting through that and peeling it off, it exposes the innards of the pickup, the secret inner workings of a violin style rod piezo. And I'm going to try to not lose the parts because I learned the hard way the first time that it's the shrink tubing that actually holds the whole thing together. And the parts, once that's off, are kind of loose in there. So, 
think you're able to see there's a top thin copper strip and then there's a layer where there's a little brass strip on the other side there's a little ceramic special ceramic strip in the middle there's an insulating spacer and then there's the base plate and I don't know if you'll be able to see this clearly I'll try to get it in there just right the leads come out of that single wire and are soldered on to either side of that base plate because that base plate is actually two separate pieces of metal uh, attached together so basically what's happening or, or how this works how this functions as a piezo element is that a circuit is formed when these components are all in place so the violin rod pe oh, just lost one of them um, all right bring it back to the the main one uh, Nick the violin rod piezo is underneath the saddle the strings go over the saddle on an instrument press down on it with the vibration the vibration excites the violin rod piezo <coughs> and what happens is a circuit is formed by the, the touching of these metals and the ceramic. I can't explain here while, while standing here exactly how piezos work, but it's something about the ceramic being in between or touching the brass and a difference in something that when it's put under pressure <laughs> creates tiny amounts of voltage. And the reason they work as guitar pickups is that when they're in the saddle of an instrument or glued inside the sound box of an instrument, they uh, are excited by the vibration of the strings. Those vibrations create tiny amounts of electric voltage which go down the lead through the output jack, possibly through a preamp, to the amplifier. The amplifier kicks the, the amplitude or the whatever way up so that you can hear it and it reproduces the acoustic sound. So what happens is a circuit is formed through the positive lead up through the base plate, through the ceramic up to that top copper plate, then back down through the brass to the other side of the base plate and out. A circuit is formed. Um, so the primary question that Scott V asked is can they be cut? And by taking it apart and seeing how it was put together, I realized that, you know, it should be able to be cut. So by taking a, a decent pair of side cutters, and I wouldn't take, you saw how wide those, those uh, inner wafer pieces are the brass and the ceramic so you wouldn't really want to cut it down too thin you want to make sure you still got a good bit on either side often one side will be a little longer than the other so to get it to fit in a in a biscuit bridge maybe a homemade biscuit bridge or wherever you need it to fit um, you can kind of take a look at it we'll go back to the close-up <coughs> Nick for the moment of oh, truth Here we are. All right. So you just kind of use your side cutters, line it up, try to make a nice even cut, and bing, bing. It cuts through all three layers that make up that, that sandwich. Now, at this point, a little lower, it's pretty even. Both sides are even because the one was longer than the other. So I can test it with my biscuit bridge and see if it's going to fit. And it, it looks like I need to take maybe another six. Nope, it's going in there. So at this point, it fits down into the slot on this particular biscuit bridge. And I don't have to trim it anymore. But if I did need to trim it more, I could bring it back out. Maybe take a little bit off of the other side. Trying to do nice, quick, uh, steady cuts. You know, I, I'm not cranking or, or twisting because you can, that ceramic can be kind of uh, fragile and it'll break. Um, so you can adjust it down a little further. And I meant to bring in a amplifier. We can go back to the main one, Nick. Um, but in my testing of cutting and recutting a couple of them, they still work just fine. They pick up sound. Uh, this one is now a good bit shorter than it started off. Um, and just for reference, uh, we, we've had an article posted for a long time about the standard style of rod piezos. And you can cut these two in between. They have bumps on them that correspond to the number of strings they're for. And you can cut these shorter too. That has been made less necessary by us being able to get three string and four string versions of the original six string 
acoustic guitar rod piezo. So uh, having more options available to be able to trim and shorten, you know, one string, two string, three, five, two and a half, whatever. You know, you can kind of tweak your components for what you need. Now the only one I don't re recommend cutting is the, the piezo cable. I haven't experimented with that. I think it would mess up the circuit, but more uh, experimentation is necessary. All of this that I just showed you and described, I wrote up an article that posted on the cbgiddy.com webpage under uh, product information, I believe. Or did I do it as a blog post? Blog it's post. A, a blog post on the news section of cbgiddy.com with close-up photos and, and labels to identify parts, all of that good stuff. So if you didn't quite get as much as you wanted from this uh, attempt at a live demo, you can go in there and read that. And uh, it's now a permanent part of the CB Giddy knowledge base. I would also note that we intend to make our biscuit bridges bigger <laughs> so that they actually fit our violin rod pizos and that you don't have to cut anything to make them fit. So that has been Everything I got. Baker's Everything I know. Boot. I like it. Baker's dozen. Baker's boudoir. No, none of that stuff. You know. All right. Hi. Let's go. Woo. Why? What else we got? We yeah. already talked about that. You talked about upcoming festivals. We covered Do it again. I think we've AJ covered. Gaither. Well, there are so many coming up. We're still trying to get a handle on mm. all of them. Um, <clears throat> but there's three or four. The weekend of next weekend, weekend of June 1st, North Carolina, St. Louis, I believe the Northwest out there in Oregon, uh, downtown Vinny, putting that together in Huntsville, which is on its 15. 15th year yeah. of, of running a festival. So, of course, as always, it's awesome to see so many events. I know Jim Lewin down there in Pennsylvania, York, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. He organizes the Pennsylvania Cigar Box Guitar Festival. And that's officially slated. At which, to which I have been quite a number of times, all but one, and they're on their 11th? I think this is going to be the 11th year. And he's got something pretty special planned. I'm not allowed to talk about it yet, but the intention and the plan is to set the world record. hey -oh! That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say! Looks like I think next weekend is St. Louis. I think. Saint Louis. Saint Louis. I, uh, and I and I see that uh, Rusty Taylor was out there earlier on uh, September 27th and 28th. I know it's a few Georgia. months out, but Georgia's third Georgia. annual International Cigar Box Guitar Festival. I've uh, I've already run it by uh, the powers that be uh, at home, and I I not making any promises. I'm I'm hoping to actually make it down to Georgia. Believe it or not, I know I know I'm not making any promises. I'm hoping to make it down to Georgia for that. Gonna make it up to Marty's on June 15th in uh, Naples, Maine. June 3rd, cat Saturday, June 13th, uh, 14th, 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 uh, Naples, Maine, sorry, Marty, and, uh, gotta make the York one, so, it'll be good. That's all I know, Giorgio on my mind. Um, all right, well, here we are, we're, we're over an hour. Yeah. We've, we've run over, folks, our cup is not the only thing that runneth over. That's an old saying, of course, that we're thankful. You yes. know, many things to be thankful about. Our cup runneth over with blessings. You folks out there, when I point down here, because that's where your comments show up, on the little iPad that's down here. Sorry, and Hollis, thank you for the correction. Uh, North Carolina is June 8th, June 9th. Oh, shoot, I'm sorry. Oh, no, my bad, my bad. And uh, as Janice says, uh, looking to... forward to playing with Eric Denton and uh, old seeing, man Eric Denton. seeing Cruz at the uh, Georgia Fest. That's the sign, folks, at the show. Tune in next week. All new show, all new material. It's so fresh and new, we don't even know what the heck it is yet. It's a Giddy Gang show on Starbox Nation TV. It's a Giddy Gang show on Starbox Nation TV. Some strings.